Hey everybody, it's Mike aka That Reseller Guy. Today is Thursday and it's day three of my thrifting days in a row thing that I'm doing, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, does it have a name? Uh, but I'm doing videos every day this week. Uh, the last couple days I've gone to a Goodwill and a Savers and I showed you uh, me walking through the store, showed you what I found or what I didn't find. And uh, today we're doing that again. But today, special edition, this is Goodwill again, but we're trying to find what is the worst Goodwill store here in Arizona. Now, I know there's two on my side of town that I think are the worst stores of all of them. I still do go in them occasionally because on that rare occasion, I may find something, but overall the stores are pretty terrible. Uh, maybe if you're on my side of town or the other side of town, let me know if you agree with me or maybe you have one on your side of town that's uh, just as bad. Uh, put it down in the comments, let me know. But uh, we're gonna check out two different stores. We're gonna see what they have inside and then we'll come back and talk about some more stuff. All right, here we go. Time to go back into another Goodwill. Today is gonna be a challenge of the worst Goodwills in Arizona, at least as far as I'm concerned. These are the two near me that uh, I like the least. Now, do one of your stores have this? They don't have anything in the collectibles case anymore. They just have a binder up front that says quality items, and then they put pictures and prices of those items. If you're interested, they have to go into the back room and bring it up to the front. Seems like a huge hassle. I've actually never bought anything looking through the quality items binder, but let me know what your store does for some of their uh, more expensive items. Now, of course, I gotta just stroll through the store, see what they got. Now, the one big find that I did have at this particular store, this is the one on Priest and Elliot. Uh, is this where I found all the license plates that I've been selling, all the motor company ones, uh, there were some sports teams ones. Uh, I bought all those at this store probably one of the few finds I've had in this store over the past many months. Uh, just checking through everything. Now I see this uh, Captain Marvel sign back here. These are like these wood plaque ones. They wanted $7.49. If it were like three or four bucks, I probably would have bought it. I sell them for 12 in my booth. I have several superhero ones in there right now and they do sell, but being $7.50, I didn't want it. So we're gonna stroll through the rest of the store and this is gonna be kind of typical to uh, all the other stores. That's a clown in a bathtub. Who wants a clown in a bathtub? Does anybody collect clowns anymore? Cause I bet there are like a hundred to one people that think clowns are creepy versus people that actually collect clowns. So give me your clown opinion in the comments. All right, so yeah, we're just strolling through, checking out the rest of the stuff, see if I can find anything in here that uh, resembles something I can resell and make a little bit of money on. There's plenty of stuff in here, but that's the problem. The majority in this store is just stuff. Uh, there's a couple things that I pick up and look at. You know, there was a little doll thingy over there just trying to figure out what the heck it was. But glassware and plates, I buy very little of anything in this section. Usually if I'm buying something in this section, it's something for us to use at home. There was a Starbucks mug, it was a loan mug, but again, it's it's something that doesn't have a whole lot of value. I'm sure somebody could flip it for five or six bucks in, in their booth if they sold mugs. Check it on the back wall, all these hanging bags, housewares, knickknacks, frames, nothing there today. Again, still just strolling through, seeing there's anything I can find. Oops, excuse me, lady. I was trying to keep people off film now. There was a lot of people in these stores today. Today is Thursday, which is dollar day here in Arizona. So the oldest items, the oldest color in the store are all a dollar. So you get all the like swap meet and flea market buyers out there filling up their carts with clothes for a dollar. And the bad part is if you find anything that you want that day, you could be stuck behind a person that has 50 or 100 items in their cart that you got to wait for them to ring up. So Thursday, you can get some long lines. So if I'm going to find any items and I'm going to wait in line, it's definitely be items that are worth it. This here was a little Shopkins display case. I do pick them up from time to time, but that one was missing a couple of the little shelves on it. What I'll do is I'll put six or 10 Shopkins in there and then put it in my booth for like 12 bucks. So if I can pick them up for three or $4, I'll go ahead and do that. Going through over here now, we got the, uh, what is this? This is like the office supply stuff. Again, I don't think I pick up and look at anything in here today. What I'm gonna show you here in just a couple seconds, you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch because we get to the end of this aisle eventually and uh, I'm gonna spin over to my left. Jeez, how much? How long am I looking at this stuff for? There was there was nothing here to look at. I don't know what I, what I could be looking at, but uh, we see hardly any golf clubs and we get over to what I'm gonna call their electronics and, and kitchen gadget section. But these shelves are pretty 
empty. There's there's a few things, and actually there was the guy down there straightening things up. I think I uh, edited him out, but this cool little Sony thing, I have no idea what it was. It was 35 bucks, didn't really do any researching into it or anything. Just figured I'd show that on camera for those of you that like Sony electronics. But yeah, look, these shelves over here, this is like their sporting goods. They got one baseball glove and a discus. Yeah, that's not a very good sporting goods section. A couple other little things in there, but yeah, that's that's pretty sad. Check the end cap for the tennis rackets. Spin around the other side. And again, just very barren shelves. Not a whole lot here. Some ski boots, which you know you definitely need here in uh, my area of town. Check that out. Excuse me, people. I'm trying to film here. Uh, yeah, some empty shelves. All right, we're going to go around to the toy section. I find a bag of Legos. How much do they want for the bag of Lego? That 20 bucks. Don't worry, there's a second one coming up if, if you need more than just that one bag. But yeah, that's a crazy price. I put bags like that in my collectibles booth and I put $12 on them and they sell at that price. Check through the games. I always got to scan the games. It's actually probably my favorite part to look at in thrift stores is going through the toys and game section, especially these board games. There's a lot of good ones you can find. This here was actually new and sealed, this Trivial Pursuit. If you want it for yourself, it's a great deal. I think it was marked $2.49. Probably could sell it for about $10, bucks, but again, not worth picking up and waiting in line for it for just a, a couple dollar net profit. But yeah, if you want it for yourself, there's definitely great games and puzzles you can pick up. I think the majority of the puzzles that we buy, we buy used puzzles at Goodwill and then uh, put them together at home. So far, we're probably good about 75% of the puzzles we get are complete. Occasionally, we'll get that one that's missing a couple pieces. But overall, I think we've done pretty good. I'm actually put this in fast forward mode as we go through the rest of these toys because there was just nothing over here. It looks like I'm shuffling through here really quickly, but I just have it in fast forward so you don't have to go too long through here. We're going to take a little check one more section before I head out of the store, go over and check out the movies and game section always got to check all the seasons see if there's anything in there and then do a quick glance to see if i see any video games with again this store has very few if any i do think i find a couple xbox sports games in here was about it now at the end cap there was some cool 45 records now 45s don't have a lot of value but look we had jody watley we had madonna those there were some good ones in there but yeah just very little value to any in those all right, last little scan, check the records, check the tapes, check the books, next door. All right, now this store is out in Ahwatukee. It's on Ray Road, just off the freeway. And this is my second worst store. This, this stop's gonna be a lot quicker. I'm only gonna show you a quick section. Jerseys, this store doesn't have jerseys ever. I think they send them all to online. I've never found a jersey there. Really sad looking hat section. Even the shoe section was pretty bare. Going over here, checking out the toys. There are a couple things I pick up and look at, but just nothing really of note. Get over to the games. This whole side of the game section was pretty much empty. Now, there's a Nerf gun. I know some people flip a lot of Nerf guns. There's only a couple that I look for, the Rhino Fire and one other one, the Sniper One, whatever they call that one. Uh, those ones sell really well, but those are about the only ones I pick up. There was a vintage Risk game that can sell for like 12 bucks or so in my booth if I wanted to get it, check it for pieces and all that, but I didn't. Yeah, that's a really empty section. Quick, that girl, she was stocking some stuff out there. Her cart didn't have anything good there, so I continue on down this aisle. There's a vintage hangman here. Same with that wrist game. It can sell for about 12 bucks in my booth if I want to pick it up and uh, check all the pieces. Now, this game does okay. This is Minotaurus. It's a board game by Lego. They made several different board games. And I do go ahead and pick this one up. I think it was just a few dollars. I have a bunch of extra parts for these. I've bought a ton of these uh, in the past. It's a lot of times missing a few little small pieces in it. So generally I'll have them. Now, this is about the last thing we're gonna look at is these rows of shelves, because this is pretty pitiful. There is like nothing on these shelves, especially as we get down to what is like the sports area and some of these electronics. This And this store is pretty much always like this. There's almost no reason for this store to be open. I mean, there's just nothing here. If you're getting this few of donations, then uh, then yeah, you, you need to uh, close the store down. They did close several stores during the pandemic here in Arizona, but this is definitely one they could do away with because unless you need a spike ball net up there, there's just not much in this area. There's a little yoga wheel for uh, stretching your back over here. I think I'd pick it up and check it out here for a couple seconds. Nothing I need. 
Do you guys have stores in your area that the shelves are like this? Uh, of course, I got to come over here and check this thingy out, see what it was. And like everybody that walks by, what do I got to do? Yep, had to do that. All right, we're just about done. Check out the helmets. I think we'll flip around one more side over here, show you some more empty shelves. Few electronics, but man, this store compared to some of the other stores around, there is just nothing in here. Last little shelving section. And then at the end, you're going to see there's a girl with a cart. I go over there, check that cart out. I do get a few things. Let's take a look. All right. So what did you think? Was it store number one or store number two? Which one do you think was worse? Now, uh, in the second store, I actually did buy some items. They were new items that came out on the cart plus that Lego Minotaurus game. So I did find some good items, even though that store, the shelves were completely empty. I mean, crazy empty in that store. Uh, so that first store, I didn't buy anything in that store. It's one of those ones where I buy an item in there once out of every 10 to 12 times I go in that store. It is that that bad. Uh, the items that I did find at the other store, two of them just came out on that cart that I showed you at the end. And then that Lego Minotaurus game. So let me uh, grab these and show them to you. So yeah, first off, we got Lego Minotaurus. And I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. This box was taped shut. I did not even look inside. And the main reason why is I've bought several of these games in the past. Actually, I think I have one. Look, right down there on the shelf, I have another one. And I know that one was missing like two or three small little pieces. So I'm trying to get the tape off while I'm talking, not having to do an edit here. I'm not doing good on that. Oop, I think I might have it. So I want to look inside. We'll, we'll check this box out live and see if it was worth me buying, see if there was enough parts. And it does look like it's pretty close. So look, you got the game board, a lot of things, a lot of pieces in here. And the one thing that can be missing from these is a lot are these little, they call these micro minifigures. And there's red ones. This game has yellow ones. It has a bunch of different colors. Plus it has this guy, the Minotaur. Now I've sold just this part for like $10. So that part alone, as long as it's in there, you got a little bit of value, but We'll put this game together. The one thing I don't see is the instruction manual. I don't see that in here unless it's below the game board. I'll have to check that afterwards. But I'm gonna show you real quick on Amazon what the lowest prices are on these for a used game. Now, brand new, I think the prices were 68 or $80. I don't know. I, I looked a, a little while ago. So the right now, I think the lowest used one was like 68, which I think is too close to the new price. Uh, once one's complete, I'll probably put it in there for $49.99. I'll be quite a bit cheaper than the best used price and about half price of brand new. So maybe at 50 bucks, this will sell on Amazon. I think I've sold one for that price before, but it's been quite a while since I've had a completed one. So between this and the other one that I have over there, I will definitely have a full game. I may even have another partial one out in the garage. And I think I showed earlier that was marked $4.49. So definitely a pretty good pickup. Going to take a little bit of work to put it all together, make sure that I have all the pieces and parts, but definitely will pay off if I can get a $50 sale. Now, the next items are both Star Wars related. And again, they were both on that cart that got brought out. So uh, that's how you're getting the majority of your items out here, at least in Arizona. When you're finding stuff at Goodwill, it's when they're bringing those fresh carts out from the back room. Sometimes they'll let you search them. Most of them don't really care. Uh, they don't have to put it away. It's easier for them. But there are some stores where literally I've touched them on, on the cart and they've yelled at me and told me not to touch, touch the cart. They have signs on them still that says, don't touch. But, you know, us resellers, we want to try to get to that cart and get to that fresh inventory. But, yeah, they will literally make for, make you wait until they set it on the shelf before you can grab it from them. So, uh, anyway, first thing I picked up is a Star Wars, they call it a Jedi telescope. I don't know if a Jedi's ever actually used a telescope. But that's what this is, $3.49. I think that's pretty cheap for a Star Wars item. Uh, on eBay, I don't think they're really worth a whole lot. So this will probably be a booth item for about $12. I think it would be the price that I'll have to put that for in my booth. It looks like it has different like Star Wars scenes on it when you look through it. It's nothing too exciting, but it's Star Wars. It's kids. It'll sell. This next one, I think this is going to be the really big pickup that I got from there. Again, it was $4.49. This is called Star Wars Legion. And I'll show you the back of the box. It's a game that you play with like little figures you have to put together. Uh, the box does have like a chunk taken out of it right there. But otherwise, we're going to open this one up as well. I opened this up in the store and I was happy to see this. Look, all these pieces 
are all nice, new, unpunched, and still factory sealed. Everything's still in its bag inside. This game was never played. So still new open box, open damaged box on top of that. But I'll show you the eBay comps. I'm looking at them right now, brand new. This is like an $80 to $85 game. Uh, new open box like this, I think I'll probably put it at 60. I think that'll be probably 60 plus shipping. So $449 into a $60 sale. That's why I ended up being a really good spot or a really good stop. So I definitely can't call that one of the worst stores in Arizona. It's definitely going to be that first one. Uh, that is the one over at Priest and Elliott in Tempe, Arizona. And that store has been pretty bad for a while. All right, do you like these videos? Do you like me uh, going out to the stores, getting something other than me sitting here in my office and talking to you about sales and pickups and stuff like that? Let me know down in the comments if you wanna see more of these in the future. I have enjoyed doing them. They do take a little bit longer. Go out there, film it, editing, doing the voiceover. It takes me well over an hour, push an hour and a half to get a whole video done and out to you guys. So a little more time involved, but I definitely will do some more of these in the future if you wanna see more of them. All right, now today's little bolo part or little extra clip that I'm gonna show you. Uh, the other day I was showing you that I picked up a CPAP machine. Now CPAP machines you cannot sell on eBay. They are restricted because the, you need a prescription to get them. There are sites out there, Second Wind is one, and there are some other sites as well that buy used CPAP machines. But the one that I picked up the other day to try to experiment in this thing was a recalled unit. It was recalled last year, just a few months ago, not really that long. But I did a little more research and found out that it has some parts that you can resell. I checked through eBay for Business on Facebook. I sent them a message and told them specifically the types of parts that I was thinking of selling. And they replied back and said, these items are fine. As long as you don't need an actual prescription for these parts, you're good. So here's the three items that I listed. We'll go cheapest to most expensive. And the first off is the little memory card that goes on side. Yeah, it's just a little chip like this that goes inside. Uh, there was one out there, somebody was asking $10 for shipping. I went ahead about the same price. I think I put mine $10 free shipping. I could literally could just put this in an envelope and mail it off if I wanted to. So uh, I paid, I think it was $5 and something for the machine. I got rid of the part that had the price tag on it. I don't really remember. So we'll just say five bucks. Uh, so if I could sell that, I'd basically be back to even. This is the, gonna be the easiest part. This is a little modem that attaches in the side and I guess it sends the information off to the doctor, your computer, I don't know what it does. I've never used a CPAP machine, but it looks like this, it plugged into the side. And these are going for about $25 free shipping. So I got that listed as well. And the last part is the humidifier. This is just the humidifier that attaches to the actual CPAP machine. And inside here, if I can do this correctly, this opens up, you have a little water storage tank in here, closes down and that's the humidifier part. So this I listed for $30, I believe, $30 plus shipping. The last one of these that I've sold, at least the last couple that I've sold have been $35 range. Uh, it is untested. I did not test this. It didn't have the power cord to do any of the testing or anything with it. So I'm gonna assume it works. I put in my listing that uh, guaranteed to work. If it doesn't, obviously I will back that up. But So we got three items I can still make some money on, but that CPAP machine were whole working. You can sometimes get hundreds of dollars off these secondhand sites if you got one that's not recalled, of course. A couple things you still need to do is put a comment down below any comment if you're trying to get into Mike's contest for this month. Now, you don't know what contest I'm talking about. You're watching this video. It's the first one you've watched this week. Go back, watch Monday's video. It's talking about giving away free stuff. It's my monthly contest. So you need to put a guess in there for how much I spent at Goodwill last month. And you need to put some comments in these videos as well. If you want to be entered, you need to at least have a couple comments in here this week. I'm gonna announce the winner tomorrow on Friday. So I'll probably put that video out later in the day, just like these have been. That way it gives you guys time to watch all these videos and get your comments in. I'm giving away some better prizes. If you don't know what the prizes are, go watch that video. I show you what all the prizes are. They're all pretty good. They're all like 20 and $25 prizes. So go check it out. All right, that's it. Put your comment down below, hit your thumbs up and hit subscribe, hit the bell, do all the things that all of us YouTubers tell us to do that help us out, that help our analytics, that help our channel grow and all that stuff. And that's it. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.